Uh, joining us now on the line, Jake Tapper from CNN. Good morning to you, Jake. How's it going? I, I'm good. I'm, I have to say I'm a little uh, flabbergasted by the concept of Tom Brady being vindicated. Larry, <laughs> actually. This is, uh, I, well, we'll leave that. Well, l- l- can I just save you some time? It doesn't matter. You can't convince him. I've been saying it all morning long, but uh, we'll move on. Vindicated. Yeah, yeah. We, we can why argue it. Throw, why did he destroy his phone? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jake Tapper. Okay. So, so uh, well, wait, you want to go there, Tapper? All right. So when, when there's some sort of employment question on the job and your boss asks you to produce your own private cell phone, you're going to just hand it over? If, if there are serious questions about cheating, and yeah. Oh, all right. Good. People all right. destroy things. I, I, as a general note, and this applies to politics and sports and everything, the destruction of evidence is fairly questionable. That's which brings I, us to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> well, hold on. No, no, which makes me want to say Jake Tapper, one of the smartest analysts in Washington. Well, Thanks. that is true. We can agree. All right, all right Jake. So listen, uh, I, want to, I want to start out with, uh, with what's going on with Hillary. We had uh, Chief of Staff uh, Cheryl Mills meeting behind closed doors yesterday. Uh, Brian Pagliano, the, uh, the IT technician who set the thing up, apparently is pleading the fifth. Uh, we understand that he is not cooperating with the FBI. By the way, the State Department complaining that there are too many judges is asking for emails these days <laughs> because they say, look, we got 30 different, uh, different public records lawsuits uh, assigned to 17 different judges. They're asking for a coordinating judge. But this story just continues to drip, drip, drip each and every day. And it seems like it all could have been avoided if the basic guidelines had been adhered to to begin with. Just use a professional account for your professional dealings and a personal account for your personal dealings. And it's still, I mean, even though the Clinton campaign and Hillary Clinton herself has acknowledged that in retrospect they would do it differently, it still is befuddling uh, for all of us who have been on email for, you know, 15 years. I, I still don't fully understand it. And I agree this taking the fifth and for, for those not, you know, who needed underlines, that is a constitutional right uh, to not have to uh, testify against yourself for fear that it might incriminate you. So what on earth is this IT guy afraid of when it comes to incrimination? Uh, you know, I can I can understand on one level, okay, he doesn't want to participate in a very highly charged political congressional hearing. I'm not saying it's excusable, but I'm saying I can understand that argument. But why would you not cooperate with the State Department and Justice Department and FBI investigators as Mike Isikoff reported the other day. He's pleading the fifth to them as well, Isikoff reported. That doesn't make any sense to me. What is that? What's incriminating? Right. You know, that, I mean, it's, it's very, very fishy. Certainly works against the campaign narrative that uh, this was all allowed and permitted and that no rules were broken. Then there's nothing to be incriminated. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Well, uh, then why is this guy not testifying? Jake Tapper, i got to ask you, you know, the reason that we know about this email server and that it's an issue is because it came up during the investigation about the Benghazi attacks. And in your work as the White House correspondent there questioning Jay Carney in the days after the attack, really, I think was at the forefront. It was the tip of the spear at, at seeing that we weren't getting the straight story about what happened that night in Benghazi. Do you worry now that this has become more of an investigation, a politically motivated investigation over this email server, and the actual events that night are sort of getting lost in the shuffle? Uh, I don't know that I... First of all, thank you for uh, for, for that historical memory. I'm going to refer... Every time I get a, a tweet from somebody saying, how come you don't care about Benghazi? I'm going to refer them to you. Oh, so thank yeah, you. Oh, uh, that, yeah, they, they're fools if they think that. <laughs> but um, I do think, I don't know that concern is, is, is the fear. I, I, one of the things that I have not liked about the Benghazi coverage and the Benghazi politics is the, 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 the questions about why those four lives were lost um, why there wasn't more security in Libya for these individuals, despite repeated requests. That does seem to have been lost quite a bit, not just in this latest incarnation, but from the very beginning. Um, and that's always bothered me, because to me, the, the, the scandal is, why was the State Department stonewalling these people who were asking for more security? Why was Brian Hicks uh, in the... Um, Benghazi, and in the, I'm sorry, in the Tripoli Libya mission, why, when he testified, did he say sometimes he felt like uh, the terrorists were inside the building? Yeah. In other words, that the State Department was 
was itself uh, hurting its own employees. That does bother me, but but I wouldn't say that I look at revelations like this IT guy taking the fifth or planning on taking the fifth as a distraction from that. I, to me, um, I find it a, a mystery and certainly a political and policy question that needs to be solved. Yeah. Let me let me turn now, if I could, to the the case of Joe Biden and whether or not he's going to get into the race. Yesterday, he said he, he just really wasn't sure his family could stand up to you know what what it takes after after the loss of uh, of their son. They, they're going through that emotional yeah. trauma. He said, "I don't know whether my family is up to the you know, what it will take to run for the presidency of the United States." Where do you think he is? You know, you, the thing is, and and um, I, I really mean this sincerely. You don't hear politicians very often talk so honestly about emotional difficulties. Mm. And for anybody who watched or read the comments that the vice president made at that synagogue last night, where he was very candid about the the emotional wherewithal needed to run for president and how he wasn't sure that he had it or his family had it, I thought, you know, you just, you just seldom hear that kind of candor. Um, look, this is a guy who thought in 1988 he should be the leader of the free world. He thought it again in 2008 uh, against Hillary Clinton then, too. Uh, certainly, you know, after seven years or six years of being vice president, uh, he doesn't feel like he is any less qualified uh, for the job. Um, so I think that the, the impulse to run is strong in the sense that Hillary is damaged uh, out there and, and uh, there, she no longer seems like the sure thing that she once did. Um, uh, for the for the general election, and he you know he 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 obviously feels and has felt since two thousand since nineteen ninety eight that he he can do the job and do it well. Um, I think that it's very legitimate. Like yeah. that, that, and from what I understand from people close to him, it's very legitimate his struggle with this, the emo- the families, the the emotional toll, and something less covered and less discussed is. Bo, who I whom I knew and and really was everything everyone is saying about him, just a really very upright, super guy, the kind of guy you you like to see in public service. He took his job very seriously. He enlisted in the National Guard. He was a JAG. Um, he uh, Bo, you know, he, he didn't make a ton of money. Uh, he was a he was the Attorney General of Delaware, and so now the Vice President, not only feeling the emotional responsibility for his son's widow mm. and and kids. Um, but uh, but to a degree of financial responsibility for that. Interesting. Um, so you know he could probably make a lot more money if he didn't run for president, mm. uh, and I think that's that's bearing on him as well. Uh, Jake Tepper, since you took over State of the Union on Sundays on CNN, it's become must see television, and this Sunday is no Thank different. You. You've uh, landed Sarah Palin. This is uh, what, give us a quick preview. What do you expect to uh, speak with the former well, VP candidate about? Um, <laughs> she, uh, we're excited to have her on uh, the former vice presidential nominee for the Republican Party, and I think there's there's no better time given that. Uh, the president has just spent a, a, a sizable part, uh, chunk of his of his week in her home state of Alaska, talking about um, energy there, talking about climate change, renaming or re-renaming uh, Mount McKinley to Denali, uh, which is what everybody uh, in Alaska already calls it, right. uh, apparently. And uh, so I'm really excited to talk about that, those issues. And then, obviously, uh, her thoughts on the 2016 race on Donald Trump, on Jeb Bush. Uh, she represents uh, a contingent of the Republican base uh, that I think is really flexing its muscles right now. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited about about hearing from her. Can't wait right. to see it, and I'm pretty sure we'll have some audio to play yeah, from that show Monday morning. I'm sure there'll be something that we'll find interesting. Listen, Jake, I, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for joining us.